everybody. Welcome to Depot TV. I am your host, Sherry Jackson, Executive Director of the Depot. We're glad you joined us tonight. Welcome to the after times. Um, you know, we started referring halfway through the pandemic is what happened before this year is the before times. We knew we would come back, but not back to normal because normal on a lot of levels obviously wasn't working. Um, so here are the after times and we'll kick it off talking today with Aaron Gavigan about the return of Second Friday Art Walk with some music from Adam and Kizzy who have been a part of our Winter Wind concert series and Summer Breeze. And although they moved to California, I think we still feel like they're a little bit a part of the family around here. Um, the after times, it's gonna be weird. We're gonna have to learn how to people all over again. <laughs> I think I've forgotten what it's like to run into people and uh, in places and chit chat and do small talk. Everything's been serious conversations, quick, hurry up, what's happening next, fix it. And I can't wait for chit chat. I can't wait to be seeing people out. And guys, I hugged people last week. I hugged somebody that I hadn't seen in over a year. Uh, and I didn't want to let go. Um, I hope you're seeing that springtime is shaping up to see some after times. I hope, I hope that we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to say it again. Get your freaking shot. If you haven't got your shot, get your shot. Uh, but after times, I'm ready. Let's party. Depot TV. One, two, ready. Uh. Good things come, those who wait, and they never show up late. Just have patience, just obey. Good things come to those who wait. While you wait, prepare your plate. Yeah. Don't you miss when it comes your way. Mm. Just hold on, just obey. Yeah. Good things come to those who yeah. wait. Eat brisket, that ought to keep you from reliving. Weeks dishing can sweep us out for deep dishes. Keep living out the dream wishing. Keeping the count of each instance with things are so down, they seem finished. Somehow we keep spinning, but keep the amount a green hidden even so now our deep envy is out of reach that's how we keep christian keep fishing he listens but sometimes he seems distant just treat living like each mission it is and keep giving treat women to everything that is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time for birth a time to that time to plant a time to plug up that which has been replenished by sunlight a time to kill a time to heal a time to break down time to build a time to weep a time to laugh and the time to dance, time is our only chance to prove ourselves. You gotta just try now. Good things come to those who yeah. wait. Anything that's worth this way is worth the wait. And anything with purpose justifies a purchase day. Learn the pace and earn the patience that the learning takes. And you can turn the race, germinate the murder rate. You're killing it to turn a phrase. We're ill-equipped for burdens, but we're still admitting mercy's grace. Your worst of days precede your worship, preach your hurts away. And learn to break with purpose, like your purse is vertebrae. Burn the grave and burn, baby. Wait these tables to the turn, maybe. The turn the steaks and herbs and grapes and turn the flakes and syrup. Everything that is a season and a time to every yeah. purpose under the heaven. A time for birth, a time for that time to plant, a time to plug up that which has been replenished by sunlight. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, time to mourn, and the time to dance. Time is our only chance to prove ourselves. You gotta just right yeah, now. Coming. Music to these Westline dungeons, suiting to the mad like brushing. Blue issues upon the drab white dust, right? Move against the bad vibes, add light, luminous and flash like flooding. When you will get some bad right from it, like who was this attached like buttons? So you was a hat pipe stunt, and that's for trusting. Well, you should get act like Cooper Gooding glass, nice judgment. But you cannot collapse my trusting. You should with the cat white suffix, refuse to sit in back like bunions. I'm moving them in pack like time, and some human in the past life's cousin. I'm in beast mode if I may be so bad Everything with it. that is a season and a time to every purpose, son of the heaven, a time of birth, a time. Time to play, a time to plug up that which has been replenished by sunlight. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, time to mourn, and a time to dance. Time is our only chance to prove ourselves. You gotta trust right try to everything that is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time for birth, a time to that time to play, a time to plug up that which has been. Replenish but sunlight, time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, time to mourn, and a time to dance, time is our 
only chance to prove ourselves you gotta trust right now good things come to those who wait and they never show up late just have patience just obey good things come to those who wait while you wait prepare your play don't you miss when it comes your way just hold on trust obey Good things come to those who wait. Good things come to those who wait. And they never show up late. Just have patience, trust, obey. Good things come to those who wait. Good things come to those who wait. And they never show up late. Just have patience, trust, obey. Good things come to those who wait.
Hi guys, it's me, Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. Everybody, I am so happy to have with us some former Norman and Oklahoma City musicians, Adam and Kizzy. Welcome. Thank Hello. you. Thank you. I should say Adam and Kizzy and Juno. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Um, for those of you that don't know, Adam and Kizzy uh, have been a part of our Winter Wind concert series, our Summer Breeze concert series. We have taught and made music. Uh, all around Oklahoma, and now live in LA. Yeah, when did you guys move? Remind me when you uh, left. 2019. Yeah, almost two years ago. Almost yeah, two years I think ago. The, the last concert we played in Norman was like a week before we moved, if even that much. That's yeah. right. It was the uh, summer. Was it the Summer Breeze show? I think that, that might have been breeze. the farewell. Was Summer Breeze? Mm -hmm. That was the farewell show, and then yeah. off we went to LA. Yeah. And then came a baby yes. yep. and a yeah. pandemic. In yeah. that order. Not to mention, yeah. when we moved to L.A., we found out about the baby five days after arriving here. Right? No way. So Is that how we, that happened? It's funny because we, we were teasing yeah. our fan base. We have a huge announcement. Yeah. The news was that we were moving to Los Angeles. Everybody yeah. was guessing that we were pregnant. Later, we found out that we were pregnant. And we just wow. didn't know yet. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so everyone we said was wrong, we owe an apology. Technically, you are all right. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't know. And so uh, I think we'll talk about that for a minute. The, the move and what was your intended plan and how did that all change? So we were riding high from the release of our latest album, The Book of Vito Volume 3, which we did in 2018. Um, yeah. And our plan was to just take the momentum that we were finding in Oklahoma and come to a more competitive market and expand. We had yeah. played all the festivals there. We played all the venues we wanted to play and we just felt like it was maybe time to spread wings a little bit and uh, you know plant seeds elsewhere. So the plan was to come here, do all the open mics, network, you know, do that whole thing and uh, mm -hmm. It did not go down that way. That's <laughs> not how it went. <laughs> but you, um, you are, you guys are both wildly creative people. Uh, just wildly creative people. I love listening to you play keyboard. And you started a, an Instagram project. Was that one of the? I mean, I know that you have a million other things going. But as far as putting things out there in the world, you did a project that's still going called Bars and. Bars and boards. Bars and boards. Thank you. I lost it for a second. Bars yeah. and boards. Uh, yeah. Where did that start? That was really uh, based on a series of conversations that kids and I were having, of wanting to kind of get back to the essence of who we are as creative people. Mm. And so it was kind of a return to first love for me, which was um, throughout the years, you learn to do so many different things that it can kind of cloud what direction you're supposed to go in. And yes. so it was like, what I really love is playing keyboards and rapping. 
So let me take everything away from that and let me just return to the source. Um, in middle school, that's what it was. You know, I was obsessed with Busta Rhymes. She can tell you she was there. And so I would learn his entire album on piano and just rap it. You know, that oh, was... Wow. It didn't feel like training at the time. It was just, you know, a fun outlet. But cool. it kind of defined the path for me. So it's a return to that, the purity of it. It's, uh, they're really powerful. There, There's a lot of, it's just great rhyme and it just flows so nicely. I I, I think they're spectacular. Uh, and you've been doing that. And you also, Adam, you're a teacher now. Yes. Um, where do you teach and what do I you teach? I teach at a private school called Phoenix Ranch in Simi Valley, California. Okay. Uh, I am the music teacher. I teach all the music from... Uh, kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. Wow. <laughs> it's been great. It's been really awesome because uh, they've allowed me to come in and really implement my own program. And so I have a lot of thoughts about music and how it should be taught. And mm -hmm. so it's been the perfect uh, testing ground for some of those ideas and allowed me to do things in an order that isn't typical or yeah. you know, that's not typical, but. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to be typical, so. Get, and <laughs> the kids, the good. kids love him there. He gets a lot of good feedback from the kids, the teachers, the parents, you know, um, prior to they um, weren't learning as nearly the, on the level that they are now, and they're really grateful. And yeah. I'm, I'm just tooting his horn for him. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great uh, job for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. A real blessing. Especially in this time, you know, which is great. Right. And Dizzy, let's talk about you because you moved, went through a pregnancy, became a mother, uh, and you're still being a wildly creative person. Uh, and so right. what, is, what has this ride been like for you? Man, uh, man, almost otherworldly. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I have not enjoyed a portion of my life I think more than yeah. being a mother um and then also I've never been more tired <laughs> oh, I feel that comment <laughs> it's been an incredible challenge and um a surprise to to get through that challenge on a daily basis yeah but um the biggest reward has been being her mother and also finding that that method and that way to still be creative and to start working again, you know, yeah. doing something that I have actually have a passion for. So that's been amazing. And we were talking earlier. You said you, I'm sorry. Please no, finish. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, we that you were doing video editing work. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea that you did that until yeah. now. Uh, yeah. So. I love that you do that. Uh, yeah. What kind of projects are you working on? Well, currently I'm actually doing virtual performances for a private school out here. Um, nice. Of course, you know, there's been an uptick and a rise in demand for those kinds of videos. So um, here we are right I now started, recording one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I started there and um, I, this is my third uh, project and it's, right. you know, big projects where choir and like seven numbers and all together, you know, um, but it's been a lot of fun. And uh, it's funny because video editing was kind of like the side project or the behind the scenes project that I would mm -hmm. do for Adam and Kizzy, basically, you mm -hmm. know, so it was never a forefront type uh, job yeah. that I did. Whereas like now it's the perfect and ideal job for me to work while being a stay at home mom full time, you know. And how amazing that you had, well, like I said before, both of you are wildly creative people uh, as individuals and together, you're just bam, uh, but uh, uh, that you have all of those skills at a time when those were the skills that needed to come to the table. Exactly. That's yeah. lovely. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and you were telling us about a special project that you did. Uh, for Juno's first birthday party. Would you mind if you told everybody about that? Because I think that's amazing. Yeah. I gotta I'm very a, happy about it. I got to give a little backstory. <laughs> so <laughs> when uh, Juno was born and it was time to get her first vaccinations, yeah. we went to the hospital. We were stressed out about it. And so um, 
we went in and when it came time to do the shots, Kizzy just started singing to it. Mm -hmm. But she was singing songs from The Wiz, which Juno at this point had seen a few times, I think. Because it's one of my favorite musicals right. of all time. Which means <laughs> <laughs> with or without her permission, it's Juno's favorite musical now. Too. <laughs> well, she's singing the most for sure. Yeah. So she, I had discovered prior to this appointment, I had discovered that when she cried, if I sang, funnily enough, you can't win <laughs> from the musical, it would instantly calm her down. Really? Yeah. And wow. it was like one of the worst songs you could sing to a child, but. <laughs> yeah, the message is not ideal, but, the, but it's the beat. She loves it, yeah. But we you know what's really song. funny is that mine as a toddler really liked Beat on the Brat by the Ramones. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a terribly inappropriate song to sing to a child, but we did. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that episode of Friends when Ross figured out that his baby liked, I like <laughs> 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 baby got <my> <laughs> Yeah, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, so when it came time for the shots, I just broke out and you can't win. And she took it like a champ. Like, I don't even Aww. know if she knew she got a shot or not because she was just so happy That's to be cool hearing the songs. So. so now anytime she has to get anything unpleasant done, they know us at the clinic as the singing family. Now yeah. We go in, I do the bass line and the beats, Kizzy sings the melody, and right. Juno yeah. sings her little wailing background vocals. Right. And she doesn't react to anything else. She yeah. just gets lost in the music. She dances. Yeah. So when it came time to do a birthday, we were looking for a theme. And my sister was sending me ideas, and then it just came on like a light bulb. We should do The Wiz. <laughs> she loves The Wiz. Yeah. So we immediately got to work. It was perfect for us because Kizzy has so many musical friends or professionals, and it's like maybe we can get them to film their parts and send it, and we can use all of these video editing wow. skills. Yeah, I had already had experience editing a video of this caliber because of the work I've been doing for these schools. So I went in, I created a medley from the songs, worked out all the tempos and the keys and created transitions and sent out the demos. We cast the parts of yeah. our friends and our, our, our mothers. Right. So my mother was a character. Kizzy's mother was a character, which was nice. And then everyone else is just professional friends of ours who did an incredible job yeah. and okay. also would not have been available, I don't think, right. without yeah. the pandemic. So well, one such was Julius Thomas III, who was playing Hamilton on the national tour in Sacramento. And yeah. so, and the only reason he's not still doing it is because the show got shut down. So. Yeah. I got, I got to see it in January, right yeah. before oh, the really. pandemic. Yes, I was so happy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, boo. Okay, wow. I think I might have maybe I saw your friend on tour. Was he too was he touring with the show? Maybe uh -huh. yeah, likely that you saw him. Yeah. I mean he he has been Hamilton for the national tour since it started. Well, right. then I saw your friend. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he okay. plays. And, these, and you put them all together and you made a medley of the whiz for Juno. Yeah. For How did she react? Oh, oh, she, she loved, loved it. it. She, she was loved dancing, it. Yeah. smiling, and that's all great. That. Yeah. That's so good. That's yeah. on the Facebook, right? Yeah. So she had a wants very to see music loving it. child. Like her first steps were to music, dancing. Like she stomped James into her Brown. first steps. James Brown. She she's trying to sing. She just doesn't have the vocabulary yet, you know. But like she she loves to dance. All the she's time. just really into sound. She does animal sounds. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I say, Juno, what does the doggy say? And she makes a barking yeah. sound. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> and what an amazing experience to get to have both of you terribly creative people as parents home with her during the pandemic. We talked about that a little bit earlier that you there's a you know blessing in the curse that you got to be around and be at home. Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I, I don't talk a lot about it just because I know how many people are suffering. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the truth is, like, we've been really fortunate. Yeah. And the timing of it, everything just felt like a real gift for us yeah. um, in the storm. And it doesn't mean it has not been hard because it definitely has. But, you know, there's so much to be thankful for, you know. Yeah. 
keep our, our minds focused on all that. And, and she's at the top of the list. You know, she makes all of this bearable, you know, more than bearable, honestly. Yeah, they're absolute joy. My 14 year old often says kids are gross. I'm never having any kids. And I'm like, yeah, you'll, you'll change your mind on that. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause there's a, there's a lot of love there. And you know, there's a funny thing I've discovered among creative people during the pandemic. It became with so much mm-hmm. going on, but so little activity possible. A lot of people just channeled that into some creative space and that became yeah. a, yeah. a real positive because we did. Yeah. The pandemic, yeah. the whole, all, everything about, uh, 2020, not just the pandemic was hard. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. One. It's, it's always the case. I mean, it doesn't matter how bad things get. You can always find silver lining. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, uh, what kind of music are you going to bring for us to Depot TV? You're giving some videos to us for airing on Depot TV. You know, our plan is to just come with a mix. We want to like do that. a little this, a little that, um, yeah. stuff that Juno likes. Stuff Yay. that we like. Yeah, you that's know. what. <laughs> oh, I love you guys did a duet of "Stay Awake," the lullaby, a few months back. That was really lovely. I loved yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. yeah. Um, it has been beautiful chatting with you both. I'm so happy to to get to see and hear Juno. I'm so happy to get to talk to you both and to find you both healthy and well uh, and doing all right. We miss you in Oklahoma, and they're lucky to have you out in LA. Thanks for being here, guys. Pleasure. Bye. Hi, everybody. We are here with Erin Gavigan, Executive Director of the Norman Arts Council. Welcome, Erin. Thank you for having me. So happy to have you. Um, Erin and I, full disclosure, we are uh, colleagues and friends. Uh, we we spend a lot of time together working on the art sector in Norman. So um, I'm so happy to have you on and get a chance to maybe unpack um, the awfulness that was the pandemic that shut everything down and start to talk about how exciting it is to see us nearing the end of that and to see things coming back. Yes, to move forward. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Absolutely. This is going to air after, uh, but I hope the one event was very successful, which is a funny thing to say to you now as you're preparing for it to happen this week. (laughs) Well, I have a very good feeling it's going to be quite successful. So there you go. So we just get to tell everybody, we'll just use our premonitions and say it was fantastic. fantastic. You're sorry you missed it. A fabulous time was had by all. There you go. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) And I really hope that's the case. Uh, But the last year was rough to be running an arts council and a granting organization. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I don't know if um, if, if everybody in the audience knows a lot about how the arts are funded in Norman, Um, but we are funded in a big part through um, the hotel tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the money that the Arts Council uses to grant out to all of the other arts organizations in the community, um, as well as to support our own programming. Um, And, you know, going into the pandemic, um, it was uh, it was a pretty scary first six months when Mm -hmm. um, hotels shut down, you know, If they were open, their capacity was at like 10%. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, for the first time ever, uh, saw the money that we thought we had for the current year disappear. And like we actually owed money back to the city, which was something, a place that we'd never been in before. Um, yeah. Fortunately, um, in the arts, we are great little advocates <laughs> for, oh, yeah. for support of the arts. And we all came together and we did a really good job of um, talking to the city, you know, about what the issues were, how uh, uniquely the pandemic was affecting the arts in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the city responded with CARES Act funding for us. Um, and it it saved us, really. It, it was... Um, it was the money that we needed to to bring our grants back up to um, that level that we had planned to grant at. 
before the pandemic happened. So, Mm -hmm. uh, so things are, things are much better now. Um, we are not out of the woods financially speaking, even though we may be coming out of the woods, um, event wise, but, um, we still have work to do. Um, you know, it's the, the tourism industry, which is what, you know, feeds the hotel room stays and then feeds the hotel tax and feeds the arts. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a while to get back to where it was pre pandemic level. Um, yes. but there are signs now that, um, you know, that, that things are definitely improving. The CDC has said, if you're vaccinated, you're safe to travel even for leisure purposes within the United States. So I think that's going to be, um, a big, a big game changer for us and hopefully get that tourism industry back to where it was. You know, I'm so glad that you brought up the hotel tax and the way that the arts are funded in Norman, because I don't, I think you're right. I don't think a lot of people, including the audience at the depot really understand this kind of symbiotic relationship between, tourism and travel and arts and local businesses and this whole machine, all of these parts that bring our sector in line and, and help fund the things that we do Uh, just for our audience at the depot, we depend on funding from the Norman arts council. They're one of our major sources of funding along with 27 other arts organizations here in Norman that receive funding from the arts council. Then that arts council who receives their funding from a very special thing that very few places have. And here in Norman, we have that hotel motel tax that helps fund our Visit Norman, helps provide some funding for Parks and Recreation Department as well, and helps fund the Arts Council so that there's money to grant to make sure that we have the festivals and the outdoor concerts and the arts agencies and the performances that we love so much in Norman. When that collapsed, we were all right there with you holding our breath uh, wondering, well, how do we get out of this? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm with you. It is spring of 2021 and we are all very hopeful that with the level of vaccinations rising and then case numbers dropping and things starting to come back online that we'll see a big comeback. Um, and there is a big comeback to talk about. Yes. I'm so excited. I can't even stand it. So let everybody (laughs) know. So um, it has been over a year now since we have had a in-person art walk in downtown Norman. And yeah. we are very excited to announce that May is the month that we're bringing it back. Um, yay! Yay. <laughs> it's like, it, it's, a, it's a signal, I think, of, of yeah, yeah, this return to normalcy. Um, and it's, it's, it's really nice um, when we, we talk about it coming back in May, how, just like you, how excited everybody mm-hmm. is. I mean, it's just like, it just makes people smile to even think about yeah. walking around downtown, seeing people, enjoying art. Yeah. So we're, mm-hmm. we're very excited. We're, you know, we're still cautious. You know, we're, st- we're going to enter it with some, with some caution. We're going to encourage as much activity to happen outside as possible. Absolutely. And then, yeah, if there is inside things to experience, you know, that we, you know, we make sure we're social distancing and masks are worn and, and things like that. But we are so excited to see a second Friday on Main Street again with just people walking around, enjoying <sighs> each other. I'm going to cry right now uh, <laughs> because it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Art Walk, um, Art Walk and you and the Arts Council, just huge credit for building Art Walk into the extraordinary event and monthly festival that it is. Uh, it's a beautiful thing for Norman. It is one of my favorite things on planet Earth to be able to exactly <laughs> like you said, to experience the art, check in with our local businesses, see about a million people that I know. Uh, Mm -hmm. and wave and hug everybody. And I cannot wait to see it come back. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's going to be really, it's going to be exciting and it's an exciting month for it too. Um, I know that, that um, a lot of the normal locations that participate in art walk will, will have fun things planned. We have a big exhibit opening up at main site. Um, We have Denise DeWong. Yes. Filling up the whole space. It's going to be amazing. Um, and then we also have the continuation of our Artful Inlets project with the city of yes. Norman. 
So we will have five new artist murals um, painted. They'll actually be along Legacy Trail between Main Street and the library this time. Oh. The library. Um, and so those will be installed um, and ready for people to go out and explore um, during May Art Walk as well. So we're very, very excited about that. That's thrilling. It's just thrilling. And we are also excited at the depot. Our brains are cooking with all of the ways that we can help add to the fun to bring it all back. And we can't wait. And thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks mm -hmm. for doing an interview for us today. Thank you for your diligent, steadfast, never ending advocacy mm -hmm. on behalf of the art sector. And Norman, you made a huge difference this year. I appreciate you. Well, thank you. I appreciate you too. All right. Thanks, okay. Aaron. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. All right, everybody. Aaron Gavigan of the Norman Arts Council. Hi, everybody. I'm Ken Hatem. I was asked to read a poem for you tonight, and I think I'll read Warblers in May. It comes from my 2015 collection, Persimmon Sunday. Um, the poem is a response to a Brazilian poet, Miriam Fraga. And in her poem, she's referencing Baudelaire's famous poem, The Drunken Boat. So you have two or three layers here. Um, and if you're aware of that, that's informative. If you're not aware of it, that's fine. You can enjoy the poem without knowing that. Warblers in May. Duke Ellington's swing band starts Tuesday morning. Coffee and chicory, New Orleans style, helps me find the back stoop. I unlock the door, step into timeless sage and hardwoods. Hear the warblers, stop, listen close. Marvelous trilling every horn player mimics. Sit with me, won't you? Sit with me in the first streaks of light. Let's sit a good long while. What's the hurry? Everything moves too fast. We've hijacked ourselves, hostage to ransom we cannot pay. Our boat tumbles in the waves. Clinging to a capsizing boat, we survive because we are lucky. In the waves, we promise to be better. Sit with me a while. Sit and listen to the warblers in May. <laughs> Was a cold, cruel world to an eighteen year old girl with two kids. But my, we made it. No 
Well, the first Willie Nelson picnic we did was in 1974. Uh, it was held at uh, Texas World Speedway in the infield at uh, College Station, Texas. And I still have, I'll put these, I still have tickets that were comped all the musicians for the, <laughs> for, I have so it for cool. all, all three days. Still have it. Wow. Yeah, and uh, let me see. It was, yeah, it was general admission, $8 advance, 10 at the gate. Of course, you know, we were we were there to play. But our story at the, at the Willie Picnic that year was uh, we still didn't have a record deal at that time. <clears throat> but we'd, we'd done quite a few uh, shows with Willie. Just remind me, which, which group are we talking about here? Is this uh, this is Ray Wiley Hubbard and the Cowboy Twinkies? Fantastic, yeah. So it's 1974, and uh, <clears throat> we uh, we arrived and um, we never played. We were there and we were scheduled to go on, but uh, the TV show Midnight Special was filming that uh, and filming performances for their TV show from the picnic. And uh, they kept wanting to reshoot certain people, some of the bigger names that they were going to put on the uh, their broadcast. And we kept getting bumped. And we weren't the only ones, but we, we kept getting, up, getting bumped. It's like we were supposed to go on at whatever day and time. And then we got, oh, wait, well, we're going to have to bump you guys until this time because we want to reshoot Ricky Nelson or we sure. want to reshoot David Carradine uh, or whoever. Right. Uh, yeah. He was, he was there. David Carradine was one of the acts. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, he didn't go over as well as some of the acts, <laughs> but anyways, so we just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And, and ultimately we didn't play. Uh, Ray did get on stage uh, one time whenever Jerry Jeff, uh, was doing his set and he called Ray up to do uh, up against the wall redneck mother with him. Right, right. But uh, then there, there's actually a picture in Ray's uh, book that he did, his uh, autobiography that he did. A uh, time well lived is the title of his uh, autobiography, and so I just gave Ray a plug there. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's a picture in his book where he's we're backstage at the uh, at the Willie picnic that year. And Ray's explaining to us why not only are we not going to go on, I believe this was probably the last day, but also, well, we're not getting paid anything either. So <laughs> so we just basically went and hung out for three days in the sure. infield at the uh, at Willie's Picnic. <laughs>
guys, it's me, Sherry. And guess what this is? It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. Without it, don't you wait around? But love to find us 
up when it gets tough. Ain't nobody else that can heal love. It's just the two of us. Don't you give up? Yeah. Cause this love is going to stay. Love perimeter set. Love perimeter set. Love perimeter set. Yeah. Love perimeter set. Come on. Love perimeter set. Sing it with me. Love perimeter set. Yeah. Love perimeter set. Uh-huh. Love perimeter set. I keep running back to you And you're always there for me And I hope you always stay My heart once was torn in two And the pain inside ran free And I hope it stays away But in case it chases We'll be on our way We'll run till morn Let tomorrow borrow light Enough for gray To run till morning I'll be running, running I'll be running Let's be on our merry way Got brighter days ahead, so I'll keep you by my side. Life gets better every day. There's a light where I once bled, and a hope where I once died. But it's there a glaring danger threatens love. Yeah. That I'm never ever all the way above But if it finds me I'll be running, running I'll be
keep running back to you And you're always there for me And I hope you always stay My heart once was torn in two And the pain inside ran free And I hope it stays away But in case it chases We'll be on our way We'll run till morning Let tomorrow borrow For joining us on Depot TV today. We're so glad and grateful that you spent some time. We are very grateful for all of our sponsors, the people that make all of this happen. Thank you to Aaron Gavigan for being here, to Adam and Kizzy. Uh, thank you to Ken Haida for his poetry. Uh, thank you to Terry for telling us stories. Thank you to Michael Hillier for his content. Thank you to folks like you who could become a member of the Depot and help support all of the things we do for as little as $5 a month. And we appreciate you too. See you next week.